Um, you know, before I let you go, Teresa, I just want to, you know, obviously on behalf of, you know, our owner, our organization, our football team, staff, myself, John, everybody included, just, just express our condolences to Virginia, the Madden family, the Raider family, the NFL family. Um, you know, I, I personally um, very, sh very, very saddened, disappointed. You know, Coach Madden was, um, you know, I got to be a part of this small subcommittee just for a brief amount of time. And he would, um, would always send text messages um, of encouragement. And I found that to be um, really refreshing. Um, helped me personally, you know, after, after losses or things that you second guess. Um, I would also say that um, something that was extremely important to him was the care that the, the former players received. And that was a, one, a huge mission of his uh, through that subcommittee, was finding ways to, to make the game better uh, but safer and also continue to take care of those former players because he loved his players. Um, and that was evident in the way that they played for him. So, you know, hopefully uh, we, can, we can carry on that, that legacy that he had of trying to take care of, um, you know, those former players that he loved so dearly. Mike, with the changes in the, in, in the COVID protocols, do you do anything different to uh, maybe protect a quarterback or something as you go well, into these? Well, uh, we're hopeful that, um, that the, what we have set up, you know, the setup that we have in the bubble and, and the distance, um, we're asking everybody to wear masks inside and, um, and everybody's very conscious um, of it. You know, we're very aware of, of what's going on. Um, appreciate everybody working together as, as a team from, from our training staff, our medical staff, our players, uh, coaches, you know, just to try to do everything that, that's right for this football team. <clears throat> so are you approaching it like how you did before as far as like a quarantine quarterback setup? Um, no, I mean, they're, they're, they're here in the building, but I mean, again, we've got ample space now. You know I mean? We've got, you know, the bubble, you know, that's a great setup in there. Um, you know, we have a, a, a massive team meeting room, you know, that you have just a few people in. And so we're, we're very conscious of, of making sure that everybody is, is more than adequately uh, spaced out. From your time with him and then what have you thought about his, his teams and the way they play? Well, obviously, B-Flow, um, you, you kind of know right away. And uh, you try to reflect upon... You know, when you first come in contact with, with different people, and again, Jim, you've been in this league longer than I have or been around it, and, and everything comes full circle. You know, and, uh, you know, B-Flow started as a, you know, a scouting assistant, and, you know, then, then he'd helped on special teams. And, and, you know, so he was around. We knew him. He was young. He was smart. Uh, could recognize early on that he was going to have a bright future uh, in coaching, and, and his teams reflect you know, a lot of those things that, that we learned when I was a player in New England and, and he was well, he was in a coach or in scouting there. So, you know, they, they rarely uh, beat themselves. They're very good defensively. Uh, they're, they're very good technique when you watch and you study the technique. Those are all things that, um, you know, we believe in here. What about Tua as, as a shorter guy that allows him to avoid um, – Getting balls batted down yeah. to the line. I think one defensive lineman's batted down a ball. We, we, we've been trying to study it uh, ourselves, Paul. And I think that he climbs the pocket. I think he is quick. And I think that our court, you know, our quarterback coach would call it twitchy. I think he's very twitchy to to be able to redirect, and he's got a quick release. Um, yeah, that's and you know maybe guys are matching with the wrong hand, and you know I mean he's left-handed. So maybe that was that was my theory. I don't know if that's going to hold true, but. You know, we'll have to practice that, you know, more where you're normally matching with the other hand as the ball's traveling through. But he does a really nice job of of climbing the pocket and, and finding those throwing lanes. How is their front able to get so much pressure without having to blitz? Or what do you make? Well, of they do guys? blitz. They they do indeed blitz. Um, but you know, they're 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 disruptive. Um, you know, they 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 play the run and then transition quickly. Um, you know, obviously the the edge guys, Agba, Phillips, because those are guys that are tough to handle. They're long, they're fast. Um, 
you know, they'll bring, you know, Baker, you know, they'll bring, you know, Jones and, um, you know, they, they do a great job, obviously, in coverage with, with the guys they have, um, with, you know, with Howard and, and, and Jones out there, uh, really just playing sound, square, physical. You know, it's, you know, we have to be careful when we throw it their direction. About, uh, your, your love for, for Ryan, the kind of toughness he embodies. Um, as he faces his old team, I guess, how would you maybe assess the impact he's had on this franchise on and off the field since he's since he kind of first arrived in well I mean I think the focus is on this week the focus is on the Dolphins that you know the the reflection you know we want our we want Ryan to be our quarterback for for a long time and so um you know I know he's focused on this week that's where my focus is that's where our football team's focus has to be is is how are we going to you know be able to execute the keys and taking care of the football you know Converting on third down, recognizing pressure, being able to pick up guys from from all over the place. How are we going to be able to execute our first and second down offense? So, you know, that's what Ryan's focus is on, and, and that's where my focus is. Dane's skill set so good when you guys uh, go with those tight end packages, and, and kind of how was that idea born? I guess. Well, I think Dane, you know, when when John and I evaluated Dane, you know, he was a big guy that played multiple positions in college. Didn't stick at one for very long, probably out of necessity. He played nickel. He played boundary corner. You know, and we felt like, <clears throat> you know, he could be a, you know, a good special teams player, very good special teams player. He's um, he's fast. Uh, he, he's he was big. He's strong, and you know, wasn't afraid of, of contact. And you know, we've seen him, you know, do a nice job for us on special teams. And then. The more that we wanted to try to give him a, a role and develop him more as a safety, then you know things happen. You know the injuries have happened, and um, you know so when he gets when he's there and he's available, we just you know try to try to give him everything that he can handle, and that we felt like in those particular games that was something that his skill set uh, allowed for, and you know it, it was a good uh, role for him to execute. We'll see where where it is this week. Such a dangerous weapon for them, other than the fact they line them up all over the place. It's involved in the return game. Well, he, he um, you know, he's got explosive speed, so I think you have to honor that. I think he's a decisive route runner. I think that he uh, adjusts to the ball well. You know, for for somebody that you know is isn't a, like maybe the the length of of Gusecki. You know, I, I, he can go. You know, from full speed to, to be able to throttle down and come back and and try to make the quarterback right. I don't I don't see him fighting the football at all. Um, they ask a lot of him. You know, they move him around and you know, week to week. So that's a credit to him to be able to to study and and to prepare and to, to get you know get lined up in, in different spots. I know how uh, difficult that can be for for any player, especially a young one. Swarming into into this new gear the last couple of weeks. I don't know. You know, I mean, I think I, I thought initially that that the rest. You know, I mean, I do. I think that some of these guys that have played. You know, I mean, Kevin Byard's played a lot of snaps for us. Harold's played a lot of snaps. Jeff's played a lot of snaps. Right. So, um, you know, maybe a, a combination of getting some guys back. Um, a combination of, of being sure and understanding and actually seeing that this kind of does work. You know, I mean, instead of being an innocent bystander, we had some of those, um, some of those on on you know Thursday, where you can't count on any one guy making a tackle in this league. These players are too good, too explosive, too strong with the football. So you know, we have to continue to work that. We have to continue to preach it and show them, you know, what it looks like when it's done properly. Um, you know, and that's that's just really how you how you should play defensive football. Daquan Jones that's kind of shown you what kind of impact he's been able to make over the last few games? The first thing is he plays hard. That was the first determining fact. That was his redeeming quality is he played hard. He, he ran uh, his fat ass to the ball. And <laughs> and that's what he did. And so that gave him more opportunity. And then he started to work on technique and uh, understanding uh, of what was going on and, and just continued you know, to improve. So that would be the first thing is that he that he ran to the ball and that was what noticed you know got him noticed. Uh, Mike, 
On Monday, I think Flores said that uh, when he started, I think as an assistant there in New England, that he, you almost coached him more than he was coaching you. Uh, how was? What, what do you remember of the, uh, that? Not that much, process? but I know that that was, I'm sure, tongue in cheek. Um, you know, Brian. Brian is very intelligent. Um, I have, you know, continued to bounce ideas off of him, even though we're obviously competitors. But, you know, in the off season, you know, there's things that. You know, there's guys that you trust in this league, and, and I would say that, that B-Flow would be one of those guys that I would certainly trust and, and call a friend. Having been one of the defensive players that got the opportunity to catch touchdowns, what do you think of Christian Fulton? Uh, excuse me. Wilkins, Wilkins yeah. And how yeah, I actually go him. back with, with Christian. You know what I mean? Was was at his school in, in, in high school, and so we've actually stayed in contact, and he'll send me random texts or I'll text him in the off season because, you know, he's recruiting defensive linemen for Ohio State. So... And and he went to school outside of Boston and you know Connecticut and um, he's very athletic, very athletic and and that doesn't surprise me at all that they ask him to do that role. Um, he's really good uh, transitioning in the pass rush inside. He can he runs games. He can penetrate and he also you know can can you know, execute you know, whatever they're asking him to do up front as well. Off the COVID list to practice today. Uh, Taylor, I'm sorry, yeah, Taylor Lewan is back and uh, expected to be at practice. About December football, um, and now we're reaching the two final games in the regular season. What have you liked the most out of the second half of the season? And considering you have had some guys back, it probably has made it a little bit easier. But just the rallying of this group um, just continues to have that mindset. I mean, I think they come in. I think that there's a consistency you know, obviously, there's there's things that we we have to take you know take care of the football. I think that that's that's been the biggest thing. Um, you know, we can all clearly see that. But I think that there's been a resolve to to really say, you know, we 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 want to just now start our season, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. We're two and one at that point in time. Um, I would imagine that David will, um, you know, try to get some work in. We'll see. You know, on a limited basis, basis, I would imagine. Jeff's tied for the lead tackles amongst defensive linemen. What's that mean when a defensive lineman's getting to the to the? Well, ball I think here? the first thing you, you try to ask those guys to do is is to make the plays that they're supposed to make. You know, I, I, I always enjoy you know defensive linemen making tackles, but what you don't want them to do is sit there and play peekaboo where you know they're in the B gap, they're in the A gap, they're in the B gap, and the guys behind them don't know where they're going to be. So. I think that's the first thing that we, we want him to do, which he does. Uh, and then he runs the football. And he chases the football and, um, you know, extremely hard. Uh, I think that that's something he takes pride in. Within that, he has 40, I think it's like 40 solo tackles. This seems like a high number for a defensive tackle. Like what What is behind that? Is that I think some of the technique. I really think some of the technique. You know, I think that, um, you know, that it's no secret that, that there's going to be some holding that goes on on the interior of the offensive offensive line, and so, which is fine. We all understand that. But when when Jeff plays with technique, that gives him extension and separation, and allows him to to shed and, and not get grabbed or or tied up as as the running backs going through. So, I think that's been the biggest thing uh, in his, uh, you know, just this this season, and what's something I've recognized. It hasn't been like he's played any harder. It's just that he is. Um, you know, playing with uh, with good technique and, and you know, playing with his hands. Now to David <clears throat> Kessenberry uh, this year for you guys at right tackle. How has he kind of um, handled that spot? Well, he battles. He competes. He's been there every. You know, his, his availability um, and, and durability. Um, you know, has been something that uh, I always admire. You know, he battles, not without mistake, like everybody else. But um, you know, it's uh, it's been uh, been he's been very steady for us, and you know we got to continue to find ways to to help him against you know premier rushers. You guys come off the COVID list. Are there extra conditioning things, or that you have to monitor and make sure that they're that they're passed before they're activated? Anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean I think that that's that's our. Um, that's our duty as a team, as a medical staff, to make sure that um, it's not just five days and roll you out there. I mean, every every case that 
you know, I've seen is, is different somehow. Um, so I think that we owe it to, to the players, and that's, that's what we always have done, is to make sure that they're physically capable of, of going out there and doing their job uh, and not just saying, well, you know, five days, go back out there. First game was in Miami. That yeah. long day and tonight. Uh, nice to have the. Uh, how different, obviously, the situations. But do you have flashbacks, bad memories from that day? You just try to ignore that that day ever existed. Uh, you know, I mean, you never forget your first game. But you know, I, I haven't thought too much about it. 